Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good afternoon everybody. Militia Man here. It's Saturday afternoon. I hope everybody's having a great day. I know where we are out on the lake. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but anyway, let's see. There's been a lot of stuff that's been happening in the last few days, as you guys are pretty much aware of, that... Uh, uh, they've been talking about the budget. It's been a, it's been a big deal. Uh, some folks think it's not important, but interestingly enough, um, we had a video a, a couple about a week or so ago. You can look it up, and part of it was about convergence and what we were talking about was the uh, 2023, 24, 25 budget uh, coinciding with the uh, the USA debt ceiling. And so we're going to see how that turned out. But what we thought was is that they, they had a correlation. And I think that we'll find out that um, it, it does or it seemingly will uh, have an effect and, or, and, it, and has had an effect. Um, but look, they haven't done the budget yet. Uh, they did the first reading of the budget uh, on a Monday. They did the second reading on a Tuesday. They did all of those readings um, uh, all the way through in two days. But yet, over a month later, they hadn't finished it yet. So it's obvious that there was a reason for that. And I think that is uh, because of uh, this particular budget is going to be far different. We've all talked about that budget being um, not an operational budget, but partially an investment budget. So what come, come about is that there, we're seeing different, different um, time, timelines offered up by the, uh, the news media outlets, uh, Al Sistani. Uh, some clerics that are in Najaf, they've all been talking about specific things. And some of that is, is like when, in fact, that the, the budget will be completed since they've had so much time to do so. Well, they probably exceeded some of the time timelines because of um, the, the, vo uh, the vocal uh, IMF has been, how vocal the IMF has been, and that the IMF is clearly stating uh, some things within uh, the last 48 hours. Uh, matter of fact, I think it, was, it came out yesterday that the International Monetary Fund warned um, Iraq is on the verge of a major crisis and time is running out. Well, look, we all know that Iraq has, done, has seriously done some inroads in lots of different things. Their electronic platforms, the ISCUTA system, the Abuna platforms, that's it's, uh, indirect, but it's, it's related because they cleared on it. Uh, the, uh, the SWIFT system, the ISO 200022, we've, we've hammered that out a few times. But the fact remains is, is that uh, Iraq has made inroads, and one of the key, key components of that inroad is that they did the point of sale uh, systems uh, within the last 48 hours as well. And that is to, to um, interlink all institutions with uh, the point of sale. And so that is not only uh, bank cards, electronic cards, all that stuff. It's also um, institutions being able to uh, take payments for all the services that the government provides. So all of those things are happening in real time, um, and they have never they've never been here before. We just we just haven't seen those things. So so uh, again, have they been kicking the can? Well, no. Not necessarily. They've been doing a lot of things. They've been working behind the scenes and getting things done. And interestingly enough, they said they were going to have this point of sales done by June 1st. And guess what? They did all that on on time. So, uh, you know, think about it in a little different terms sometimes because it's it's actually been a one of the most complex uh, things I've studied uh, for over a decade. So, you know, take it take it for what it's worth. It's it's a serious business. And, and granted, it hasn't happened yet, but it's. Uh, showings that come come to fruition, but the IMF uh, basically uh, it says that the political parties are fighting today, uh, and they're maximizing their shares in the budget, um, and they're fighting over um, money effectively, and how much they're going to get. So it's a negotiation situation. But moreover, they they've also said that they've agreed to come to consensus, but but they're still kind of arguing it. It's kind of a cultural thing or something to that effect. But, but the IMF gave them a stern warning, whether it was a, an idle threat or if it was a, a, a factual statement. Um, it says time is running short for this government. And it says opportunities are beginning to diminish. Uh, and it basically goes on and says it must focus on dealing with the internal economic imbalance and the corruption with all its tools. Okay, if you read this from what they're coming from, where they're coming from is that they Iraq is basically uh, has some shackles still 
and and there's some protections that some of the people out there in our world here that are studying this have had a little disappointment when um, uh, Executive Order 133303 was was um, re-signed. But then again, um, I think it's protections for Iraq. And I think it was protections for uh, investors that are um, invested in what we're looking for right now. So those things uh, were, were key components, and that push. Um, or that this comment basically stating that um, get your get your internal stuff done because the international external situation um, those deals are not what we're going to be talking about because it's kind of like Kuwait. What happened to that thirty-two billion dollars? It never went anywhere, did it? Well, this is kind of saying the same thing. A, do what you say you're going to do get Article 8 compliant effectively, and uh, let's move on and get to that private sector. That's my view on where that comes from. So uh, let's see, Al Sudani. So Al Sudani, he, his advisor has come out and talked about the importance of launching and generalizing the electronic uh, payment experience in, in the government and the private institutions. Well, so that's what we were talking about. We were talking about the point of sales. They've, they've done the e-government. E-government is completely all-inclusive, finance, banking, um, everything that in the whole country is e-government means that they're hooked up. So this is important because it's also suggesting that they're talking about um, cash payments and the percentages, et cetera, uh, cash in circulation. All these things this e-government will be able to do, it was, will be able to manage their inflation. You got to realize that that that's a key component, and once they once they do what they're what they say they're going to do, that inflation aspect is going to go away. It's going to go away, well, at least quite quickly. Um, I mean, of course, probably not for forever, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a different type of circumstance. Um, the electronic taxation, uh, due to the interconnection interconnection of systems, will be more rapid in flow. Uh, the collection and sp and spending is characterized by uh, high accounting transparency. And it achieves uh, principles of financial governments, governance. Forgive me, especially uh, when the so-called unified treasury account is available. The unified treasury account, when when we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, or within the last week or so, uh, it's about the hydrocarbon law money. It's a, it's about the citizens, and that's one of the things that um, th that Al Sadr has always said. He said he wanted to have the best interest for the citizens. And if you realize, he's, he's been kind of quiet. And we'll kind of get to that because when they're talking about this budget not getting done, um, that's harming the citizens. So when you see Al Sudani say expedite or speed up the process, um, he meant it. Um, interestingly enough, what we believe is that there was a probably a communication between Al Sadr uh, and Al Sudani and Washington because the debt ceiling has been taken care of, it's signed, it's done. That was a convergence aspect. Um, next thing is the 2023, 24, 25 budgets on the table. Well, and when? Now it's on the table. And they kept saying that they were going to do it in the coming hours. They were going to do it in the coming days. They were going to do it tomorrow, the next day. They've said a lot of different things. But they also come back and said they're going to do it the middle of the month or the middle of, uh, of the end of the year. They've said all kinds of weird stuff. But, but today, they're going to come out and they're going to tell you a little bit more. But bottom line is, is that they have the systems, that e-government system up and running and ready to go for everybody. And that is the 2023-24 budget vote. So that vote is very important to all of all of Iraq. And the just as much as the taxation, uh, the taxes and tariffs at the borders, the point of sale systems, uh, all of that is coming to a head having to have been completed and ready for that vote. So let's see what the next thing is I have here for you today, uh, being in that it is uh, what I told you was Saturday. So back on Thursday, a couple days ago, uh, they said that at midnight on Thursday that um, Al Sudani says we're going to be speeding up the approval of the, the budget. And then another article comes out and says a uh, similar, similar thing from the uh, Parliamentary Finance Committee. They said, we're going to do it within the next two days. So those were on Thursday. Today's Saturday. Then they said, here down below, the committee will resume its work and hold a meeting tomorrow, Saturday. Okay? And or the day after, Sunday. Okay? That's, these guys are talking about 
that on Thursday, ready to go, which is kind of funny because that particular day was, they, they forgot about Friday, <laughs> the way that article reads. So some of these translations and articles, yeah, I think everybody realizes that they're not easy to read and we just do the best that we can with what we believe to be uh, pertinent information. This gentleman by the name of Sherwan Dubardani, uh, he says that the items at the PUK, friends and some of the MPs um, had added with, added some things to the budget and they were removed from the budget. Okay, I, that sounds kind of funny, but uh, they did remove a couple items from the budget that created a stir. But he says, rest assured, the bill will not be put to parliament without an agreement. So they've already kind of set the stage that there's gonna be an agreement. Um, it's just when are they going to do it? And what we're trying to say is that they're somewhat all over the board. However, it's gonna get quicker and quicker that they're gonna probably have pressure on them to get that circumstance done. But keep in mind, it's the federal court ruled that any additions or changes outside the agreement between Erbil and Baghdad are not acceptable by, acceptable by the Finance Committee. In other words, it wasn't the Finance Committee's job to, be, to do what they did. So, um, and the text of the agreement cannot be changed, so therefore it's against the agreement between Erbil and Baghdad. So what, what the federal court is saying, it's, you guys can't do that. And so they're not going to be able to do that. So therefore, um, let's get this thing. Let's get the show on the road. And I think that's what we're we're seeing like come coming quite quickly. Uh, there was another thing that happened within the last few days, which was on Thursday, I believe. But 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 going forward, it's the Chamber of Commerce uh, registering companies in the country. And so what they're saying is is that they're present uh, in the market, and they address to all merchants to support the Iraqi dinar back to the inflationary process, right? At this moment, you guys realize that if you are buying something, the smallest denomination in Iraq is a 250 note. So if something costs 350, how are you gonna get that product without giving them a 500? You're gonna lose a little bit of money on that because there's no change. That's inflationary. And if you, if you take it even further, you can find that if they adjusted the exchange rate and you don't have any small category notes or fills, it's gonna get worse, okay? So here we are just they're talking about this supporting the value of their currency by talking about the fact that to support the dinar. So if they can support the dinar with all the commercial merchants throughout the country, it's going to create what? It's going to create demand for their currency. That's how the currency will gain value. Also, it's part of it. And so that's what they're talking about in this particular article. I think you guys should take, take a little more serious look at this. It's uh, something that caught my eye and a few others. And the central bank is, um, is involved with that. Okay, so uh, keep, keep it in mind. It wasn't just the Chamber of Commerce. It's dealing with the Supreme Committee, uh, and which includes the central bank. Uh, they say that it explains the mechanisms and how it works with remittances, and it will solve all problems. Really, what will all solve all problems? We know what that what that is likely to be. So to, to fast forward to what today has uh, come out, or I think this may have come out yesterday to be fair, but uh, if it was today, well, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But disclosure of an emergency meeting of the state administration regarding the budget, uh, a meeting of resolution means they want, they're gonna have a meeting of resolution, it's an emergency. Well, they also go on to su suggest here, I'll, I'll uh, find that in this particular article, it says that the ball is now in the court of the political blocks, uh, the state administration coalition. So an emergency meeting will be held very soon. And so what we're expecting is that could be as early as today or tomorrow. But it says that the final decision will be theirs on the budget law. Um, Al Sudani, after his meeting is completed, the budget will be presented to the presidency of the House of Representatives to, for approval, basically stating likely to pass during this week. This week starts tomorrow. That's in their weeks uh, start on Sunday. So let's see if that's uh, something else because they're talking about Saturday and Sunday for a vote. Here he's saying the final, final decision will be theirs and it's likely to pass during this week. The budget depends on the meeting of the state coalition and it has to be in the presence of uh, the coordination framework and other uh, forces is basically what it says. And it basically, it's, it's reiterating, the meeting will witness a final agreement on the budget. 
uh, and, the, and that will come to Parliament to be approved. So in other words, they've already probably set the stage for that to be the case. They, they, they pretty much know the outcome of it. They've agreed on it. Uh, that last little bit of negotiations is probably going to go by the wayside uh, because they need to get this done, which was reiterated by the IMF, as we stated earlier on. Um, but look, the IMF has given a warning, and this is my view, my words. Al Sudani knows where the line is in the sand. Uh, they will likely be close and direct relations, there will likely be close and direct relations ongoing with the Central Bank of Iraq, the IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, the U.S. Treasury, etc. But it's not necessarily in that order, but those, those, those entities are definitely involved in, and in the back rooms. Um, today's signing of the, of the uh, uh, debt ceiling by uh, uh, the United States is a uh, testament to that, in my view, okay? And then I think lastly, what we're, we're talking about here is that today, Saturday, uh, the Parliamentary Finance Committee suggested a date for approving the budget, stressing that it, it will be approved before the legislative recess that begins on June 9th. Well, we just got through talking about an emergency to get this thing done. July 9th is next Friday. That's not getting it done in an emergency. That's taking your sweet time. I'd hate to have to be a paramedic waiting for nine days or, or six more days to, to have uh, the emergency uh, solved. But uh, kidding aside, uh, the, the committee requested earlier to set a date for the session. Um, there's no delay on voting on the budget. Um, the committee need, needs only a few hours to make um, order to transfers, uh, and they're almost ready and they're just waiting for the classification in the budget. So classification in the budget. What's a classification in the budget? Well, at this stage of the game, could that not be something that's uh, mathematical, that changes things for the, for the world? It could very well be. So we're going to find out. Um, he goes on to say that the um, parliament will enter its legislative recess on the 9th. Okay, so they're going to, you know, they have a legislative recess that day. But they also will come back and say, the, but, but the budget will be approved effectively before the date, before this date. And it's possible that the date will be set for this next Sunday, tomorrow, or Monday to vote on the budget in Parliament. So you can see the convergences that we talked about originally and in that, that one video that I did or two uh, support the fact that these things are uh, having a convergence, if you will. And it's actually pretty fascinating. And let's see what um, Al Sudani has to say in the next uh, 24, 48 hours, along with Parliament. And uh, even if Al Sadr uh, himself shows up, because uh, he hasn't spoken, so that tells me he's been awfully quiet, because the citizens are going to get what they expect and they need. So thank you for your time on this Saturday afternoon. If you like our channel, subscribe if you like to come join us with patreon in the community with the, with discord chat room it's phenomenal do so if you like this content that i've been giving you hit that donate button all is help helpful for all of us thank you so much have a great weekend once again guys don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content subscribe to the channel or join us at the militia man and crew patreon community for even more exclusive content you can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.